So, okay, so NIT University has been envisioned uh, or was set up in 2009. And at that time, the vision uh, was that NIT University will become a role model university for the knowledge society or the 21st century, the century of the mind. And I think even today, uh, 2020, uh, 10 years out, uh, that pretty much remains our vision. Uh, the core values are basically four, technology based, number two, research driven, number three, industry linked, and number four, what we call seamlessness. Very simply based, uh, if I explain this very, very quickly, technology is the core of NIIT University. Because of our 40 years of legacy as an IIT group, we have a strong presence in technology and we bring that experience to an IIT university and most of our programs have a strong technology focus. Okay, uh, and not just technology in terms of curriculum, but uh, also our industry partners are mostly in the technology space. Our degrees are technology focused. We are focused on uh, delivery uh, on a very, what I call, robust platform called a new digital, which is homegrown, which is actually uh, the best way to describe a new digital is it's like being on campus while you're away at home. Number two is research is research for us is more than simply faculty research. It is undergraduate research, students getting opportunities to do R&D work from year from day one. Uh, if they wanted to, and they are, and there's R&D courses, there is uh, a strong sense of uh, entrepreneurship. There have been 18 to 20 startups that have come out of NU, and we want to push this even further. So that's the research agenda of NU. And uh, number three is industry linkages. As I told you, we have more than 700 industry partners that we have worked with in the past and continue to grow. So the industry partners, because of our close linkages to industry, they contribute to our curricula. Our curricula is industry ready. Industry practices give our students 100% placements, uh, very high opportunities to work on real life uh, problems while they are at school, at university. And also we have, a, we have delivered over 20 industry linked MBA and master's programs. So, and lastly, seamlessness is about giving students choices, breaking down boundaries. So if you are a, how, if you are a, st a student in uh, BTEC, you will also get a lot of choices to take humanities courses, a lot of choices to take uh, R&D courses, to customize 31% of the curriculum is customizable. I think for us, liberal education is very important. So I think we are, while we focus on the functional core areas of, uh, let's say you're taking a BTEC in computer science, that's great. But we also believe that whatever you're, uh, whatever you're learning in the university today may be relevant five years from now when you're graduating because technology changes so quickly. But what is not something that will change is your work habits, your critical thinking skills, your problem solving skills, your appreciation for more than simply the technology aspect of your course. So that's why we have a strong, as I said, 31% of our uh, curricula is choice-based. Students can choose what they want to do. They can do a minor in finance. They can do a minor in uh, blockchain technology. They can do a minor in entrepreneurship. They can do multiple minors in the management area. There are almost 20 credits out of 190, which are humanities and social sciences credits. There are almost six to 12 credits of R&D work. So there is a lot of choice. So our focus will continue to break these so-called siloed boundaries between humanities, management, social sciences, basic sciences, liberal education, and what we call core subjects. At the current time, the university has approximately 50 full-time faculty and about 20, 25 adjunct and visiting faculty. 90% uh, of our faculty have got PhDs from uh, well-known institutions domestically and internationally, from the IITs, IMs, <clears throat> and those kind of institutions. And uh, we have uh, a very strong connection with mentor professors across areas, well-known people like professors Subhata Mitra, and uh, in education technology, Professor Day, 
and many other uh, founding professors are keenly involved. So for us, faculty is a very important uh, It is interesting. I want to make a few points to you. Um, the author of the uh, drafting committee of the new education policy, Dr. K. Kasturi Rangan, chairman of ISRO, is actually our chancellor. Uh, we have been interacting with Dr. K. Kasturi Rangan for a long time. And uh, if we, any of the uh, big ideas in the new education policy, are actually something that were imagined by NU in 10 years ago. S specifically, seamlessness or how the barriers between liberal arts and, and science and management must not really exist. And that has already been incorporated to a large extent into our curricula. Activity oriented, the holistic development of students, industry readiness. These were already ideas that we were pursuing 10 years before the new education policy has been rolled out. So we feel very gra gratified that many of our I'm ideas sure. are now getting some visibility in the new education policy. Having said that, I, I believe there are many new areas that will emerge because of the NEP, such as internationalization, globalization, allowing uh, the academic uh, credits bank, learning online, taking courses online, developing technology as becoming a, a tool for accessibility and reach. So those are constructs that are great. Um, faculty development, autonomy for the university, for a private university, autonomy matters a lot in terms of uh, <clears throat> how we can be able to be a little autonomous in terms of what courses we offer, what curricula we offer, financial autonomy. So those things are very welcome in the new education policy. So we are now waiting to see what is the timeline for implementation of many of these big ideas that the NAP has envisioned.